Yes. Mr. Canavan, before the break, we've been looking at um, information arising out of the May 1989 ACBSB meeting. The next meeting was July 1989. I'm not going to take you to that, um, but for the benefit of others, the chairman's brief for the, that uh, meeting can be found at NHBT 5061 underscore 031, and the minutes of the meeting in July 1989 are at NHBT 5072 underscore 025. Um, essentially, Mr. Canavan, the upshot of the July 1989 meeting was for more information and data to be gathered. Um, and so I want to pick matters up in, in October 1989 with a minute from you. Um, NHBT 40188 underscore 062. So this is from you, 5th of October 1989, to a Miss Wheeler in FA2B. C can you recall what the role of FA, um, the FA division or FA2B was? A finance division. Um, and, and then we can... Uh, sorry. And I was going to say that was probably the section that um, related to my work. And we can see from the first paragraph, it refers to a request from the NBTS directorate for £25,000 to purchase HCV test kits. Um, and then the second paragraph refers to um, uh, pilot studies uh, and um, the advisory committee um, uh, uh, meeting again in, in November of 1989. Um, and then the third paragraph talks about uh, evaluating test kits by carrying out field trials and reference to a cost of £25,000. Um, and then you say this in, in the fourth paragraph, you will appreciate that viral contamination through blood is a sensitive issue, particularly now that the HIV litigation is getting underway. The press has already run scare stories about HCV and commented on the need to adopt the new test as soon as possible. Clearly, we need to keep up the momentum in evaluating the test by getting the field trial underway as soon as possible. I understand that also who have given Dr. Gunson first refusal on a batch of tests and may make mischief if a decision is delayed. I should be grateful if you could explore with FA1 as quickly as possible how the £25,000 might be found this year. I should say we approached, I think that should be research management, but mm. in their view, the trial is not research which could attract um, their support. Now, th this, as I understand it, Mr. Canavan, was your bid for the funding, the £25,000 that Dr. Gunson needed in order to get the test kits to carry out the pilot yeah. studies. Um, um, you, it, the last paragraph explained you'd already approached somewhere else, presumably within the Department of Health re Research Management, um, uh, and you are now approaching uh, the, the FA branch. In general terms, how difficult or easy was it to um, persuade uh, those within the department who held the purse strings to uh, provide funding for, for studies of this kind? Getting money is never easy because there are always more demands on it than the wherewithal to meet them. Um, but in this case, um, the procurement direct, uh, directorate uh, found the money to pay for the test kits. So yes, you're right. The, the money was was um, um, in due course uh, forthcoming. Um, is it would it be right to read the penultimate paragraph, the reference to? the HIV litigation, scare stories in, in the press and so on. W w does that reflect a view on your part that those were the factors most likely to sway the, the financial division? I think uh, looking at it, I would have said I was trying to build a justification for spending the money in this way. And then, still in October 1989, if we could just look at NHBT 
Um, this is from Dr. Matters, 9th of October 1989, to Mr. Hart. It's copied to you. Um, we can see from the first paragraph it refers to a letter from Dr. Dr. Gunson dated the 2nd of October. Um, I'm not going to put Dr. Gunson's letter on screen, um, but uh, for the benefit, again, of, of those following, it's at NHBT mm. 40188 underscore 056. Um, we can see in paragraph two, Dr. Metters refers to the 1989 July meeting of the ACVSB and the conclusion that there was insufficient data um, uh, and that hence the request um, for more data. Uh, but if we can pick it up um, uh, towards the bottom of the page. Uh, yes, at paragraph six, the tone of Harold Gunson's letter suggests that he is convinced that Chiron will eventually be introduced. However, my impression from the last meeting was that other members were much more sceptical, particularly on validation. Uh, Dr. Gunson is, however, absolutely right to draw attention to the financial implications for BTCs. The committee are well aware of the cost implications and the need for a uniform policy for all UK BTCs. However, I do not think it is a foregone conclusion that ACVSB will recommend its introduction at their November meeting. They may well opt to wait FDA's consideration. Um, now, just two matters I wanted to uh, ask you about, Mr. Canavan, arising from Dr. Mehta's letter. Um, <coughs> Dr. Mehta there is describing his own impression that members other than Dr. Gunston were uh, sceptical, or certainly much more sceptical than Dr. Gunston was about the, uh, the, the, the introduction of the Chiron test. Do you recall any discussions in the department internally about that issue um, and the, the stance of members of the committee? No. And did you have any impression yourself that you can recall um, uh, uh, about the attitude of other members of the committee by, by this stage? No, I, I really can't recall. Um, and then the second issue is, is this issue of awaiting the FDA's consideration. Um, the extent to which the, the committee minutes talk about um, the, the FDA can be picked up from the, from the committee's uh, minutes and, and surrounding papers. But in terms of internal departmental discussions, do you recall um, uh, discussions uh, about the, the significance of uh, FDA approval and, and what that might mean for the UK? No, uh, apart from Dr. Metter's minute there to Graham Hart, that was, as I recall, about the only time I've seen within the department any mention of it. Um, now, can I then pick matters up in the November 1989 meeting um, uh, that Dr. Metters was anticipating in this minute? It's at NHBT 305043. So we can see it's the fourth meeting, 6th of November 1989. Um, uh, and then if we turn to uh, page four, um, the, we have the heading non-A, non-B hepatitis. I, I'm not going to read through the minutes, Dr. Canavan, uh, Mr. Canavan, we've, we've looked at it in earlier hearings. But I just want to pick it up, first of all, at paragraph 26, so towards the bottom of the page. The minutes record this. Dr. Metters explained that although the department must bear in mind the possible litigation that could arise from a prolonged delay in the introduction of general screening, the NHS management executive would want to know more facts and figures before backing such a move. Now, again, just, just pausing there, do, do you have any recollection of the extent to which concern about litigation or, or the ongoing, by this stage, HIV litigation, um, the effect that was having internally within the department on, on this issue of, of screening? I think it was usually mentioned in relation to submissions to ministers that uh, it was, in a sense, an ongoing concern. Um, but beyond that, I 
can't recall that there was anything particular about it. Um, and then the, the second point Dr. Metters makes in, in paragraph 26 is to, to record a, an expectation that the NHS management executive would want to know more facts and figures um, before backing um, such a move. Now, well, come on, well, your statement explains a, 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 and sets out a number of discussions you had with others about preparing a cost-benefit analysis and an, an, an economic case um, for screening. But uh, did you have any understanding at the time of what it was that the NHS management executive would want in order to support the introduction of screening? Well, beyond uh, a cost-benefit analysis, which was very often prepared for any change of policy, and they would obviously be concerned to uh, assure themselves that it had been done in the normal way. So the normal way in which policy changes would, would take place, particularly if they had resource implications, there would be a cost-benefit analysis uh, and the NHS management executive would expect to see hard facts and figures justifying the, the policy change. Is that right? Yes, and also ministers would expect to see the resource implications spelt out as well. Um, now, if we just go to the next page... <clears throat> um, we can see in paragraph 28, the minutes record, the feeling of the committee as summed up by the chairman was that the test represented a major step forward, but that the committee need to know a great deal more about it and acknowledge the need for a confirmatory test. And then there's a reference to the, um, uh, 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 an FDA decision um, uh, anticipated and to um, pilot studies, pilot feasibility studies. Um, now, it might be said that this um, is consistent with Dr. Metters having identified members of the committee still being sceptical. Do you record, recall whether Dr. Metters expressed any views to you around this time, late 1989, any concern uh, that the committee was being too cautious? No. As in, no, you, you, you can't recall, or he, or, or he didn't um, um, express any such concerns? Um, I can't recall that him expressing any such concerns. Um, and, and then if we can look um, at WITN 7115007... Um, this is Dr. Metters to Dr. Raymond, but copied to you and Dr. Pickles. It's dated the 7th of November, 1989. And we can see from the first paragraph, it's the day after the ACVSB um, um, meeting. Um, second paragraph says this, this was discussed by the committee and you heard their doubts. Nevertheless, if we are to convince ministers that the test represents good value, we need to produce data about the number of cases of hepatitis that might be prevented and not just rely on the argument that it is just another screening test that will improve the safety of blood and blood products. Um, do, 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 again, do you have any recollection of the, the issue um, that, that's canvassed there being discussed more generally within the department, this expectation that... Um, uh, improvement in safety was not going to be enough to persuade ministers that, that something more about, again, concrete data about benefits was going to be essential? No, I, I don't recall that type of conversation happening or exchanges about it. It was, um, as I say, uh, ministers would have expected to know the cost implications and the cost benefit of any change of policy. Um, and then if we go to NHBT 5061 underscore 072, it's, a, it's another minute from Dr. Metters on the same date.
Um, so we can see 7th of November, again, it's to Dr. Raymond, copied to you and to Dr. Pickles. Um, but this is about briefing the press. So it refers in the second uh, line to Dr. Gunson being contact contacted regularly by the media. Uh, Dr. Gunson suggested, and I agree with him, that it will be important to give press office an updated brief on the department's position on H, this is HVC testing, I think it should be HCV, before the decision to go ahead with a pilot study at the three RTCs become public knowledge. Uh, and then Dr. Metta's request that either Dr. Raymond or, or you brief the press office um, accordingly. Now, bearing in mind that ACVSB meetings were, were um, uh, intended to be confidential, um, do you have any um, thoughts or observations on um, the suggestion here that the press office should be briefed on the department's position? Not really, other than the fact that um, manufacturers would have known that HTVSB were looking at the whole question of screening and might um, seek to put pressure on the department via the media. Um, if we just look at your statement, because you, you do address this minute in your witness statement, uh, Mr. Canavan, WYTN. 7115001. And if we go to page 40. Um, paragraph 2.63 refers to the minute that we've just looked at. And then in paragraph 2.64 and 5, you say this the inquiry asks first why it was considered important to brief the press office on the department's position. In general, on matters likely to attract media attention, it was important to have lines prepared in response. This helped ensure that the department's position was well understood by the public at large. The example here is the pilot study. Once news entered the public domain, the media and public would have questions about it. Now, just pausing there, uh, again, it might be said that the best way of ensuring that matters were understood by the public at large would be to publish the minutes of the ACVSB. Was any consideration ever given at the time to doing that r rather than briefings for the press office? No, no. Um, I think it was regarded as policy formulation and um, treated as such. Um, and then for the sake of completeness, the second point you make in paragraph 2.65, um, you were asked by the inquiry whether there was a concern the department might be criticised and you say you can't now recall any specifics but you, you suspect on a contentious issue such as HEV screening, there would have been concern about potential criticism and the department would have wished to make sure that those who might have to respond to any criticism would be well briefed about the decisions taken and, and the reasons. Um, <coughs> now, uh, uh, what we then see from the documents, and I, I'm not going to go through the detail of them, but really from October 1989 onwards, there are... There's the first uh, um, in a series of exchanges between you and a Mr. Anderson um, in the branch EACB um, about a cost-benefit analysis and an economic appraisal. Um, first of all, could, could you tell us what the EACB was? The Economic Advisor's Office. Um, now, there's, there, was, there was quite a bit of toing and froing. I, I, I don't mean that in a pejorative sense, Mr. Canavan, between you and Mr. Anderson both at this point in time, late 1989, and at various later stages. You've, you've detailed the, the, the documents in your witness statement, and I'm, I'm not going to take time um, going um, through them. Um, but um, had you had previous experience of dealing with, with um, the economic advisors branch? I cannot recall that I did have. No, I think that was probably the first issue that I had dealings with them. And um, whether from your own memory or from having looked at the documents um, um, uh, for the purpose of making your statement, do you have any observations now on the role they played um, and, and the attitude that they displayed towards the possibility of, of, of HCV screening being introduced? Well, I think uh, the minutes of it backwards and forwards um, speak for themselves. 
uh, Robert Anderson was pushing for more figures and facts and was quite keen on this idea of selective screening rather than universal screening. Um, do, do you have any sense of whether um, that the desire for um, the, the, that, that kind of analysis and the, and the, the, the um, length of time it took to pr produce um, um, those analyses, whether that had an impact on the timing of the introduction of, of, of HCV screening? Mm. I recall, I think the real problem was trying to get facts and figures to put to them. That was the difficulty that took time. So w was it that um, it was thought, as we saw perhaps from Dr Mehta's um, minute, it was thought that it was going to be necessary to have that kind of data to persuade both the NHS management executive and ministers that this was the right thing to do? Yes. Um, um, now, again, just to route things in a chronology, the, the next ACVSB meeting was in January 1990. Um, I, I don't propose to um, take you to that, Mr. Canavan, but the reference for the, the transcript is PRSC 301477. If I can pick matters up just with a minute from Dr. Pickles to you, then in February 1990, um, it's at DHSC 0002496 underscore 076. Um, so this is Dr. Pickles to Dr. Raymond and you, 2nd of February 1990, uh, and she says this, I do not know if you, if you have had time for a formal debriefing after the meeting on the 17th of January, but I trust that the enormous pressures you are experiencing on other fronts has not prevented at least initiation of action needed following ACVSB. In particular, we must not delay in seeking help elsewhere in the department in refining our assessment of the cost benefit of hepatitis C screening. Uh, and then she refers to a, a, a submission also on HIV2 screening. Um, you, you say in your statement that the enormous pressures uh, referred to there um, is most likely a reference to the HIV litigation. Is, is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, um, and can you recall what impact those pressures were having on your ability, Dr. Raymond's ability, the ability of others w within the team to deal with the um, uh, request for more and more information um, on, on hepatitis C screening? I really can't recall what the, uh, the pressures on me were or on Dr. Raymond, um, but uh, I always got the impression that things on that front moved quite quickly. Um, I then just want to pick matters up um, in uh, April 1990, just with a, an example of one of the exchanges between you and Mr. Anderson. Um, this is at NHBT 5061 underscore 126. Um, so this is from Mr. Anderson to you, 20th of April 1990. Um, he says this under the heading Screening Blood Donations for Hepatitis C Economic Analysis. I attach a note on the prospects for an economic analysis of screening blood donations for hepatitis C. I'm afraid that all I have to go on is the material you have sent me, and there is always the danger that I've overlooked some critical factor. My main point is that there may be alternative, more modest and selective options worth considering before going nap on screening. Um, Dr. Elias's letter impressed me. It seems that there is very little proof to implicate blood products in the transmission of hepatitis C. I see this uncertainty as telling against the introduction of screening. I hope these notes are of some interest. It always astonishes me that the committee feel able to recommend new procedures without having the slightest idea whether they are likely to be good value for money or not. Um, now, to, to what extent, as far as you can recall, either from memory or from looking at the documents, um, was that um, a um, representative 
uh, um, contribution from the Economic Advisors Branch, wa wanting more information and, and sceptical about the value of, 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 of what you've been able to gather? I think he was constantly pressing for more information which we may or may not have been able to produce. Um, I think he was just, in a sense, underlining why he thought it was uh, important to, to have that information by saying, well, if there's not a lot of harm comes from it, then um, why is the committee going to be recommending it? Um, but, um, I spoke as a professional economist. He could never be given enough information. Um, and then just m moving on in April um, to a minute from you, DHSC 302497 underscore 061. Um, so we can see it's from you, 26th of April. It's to Dr. Pickles and Dr. Raymond. Um, and we can see um, uh, the heading is ACVSB note for PSL, so that's the Parliamentary Under Secretary of State and the Lords, on pilot study for hepatitis C screening. I attach for comment a draft note to Minister on the outcome of the meeting on Tuesday. And then we can see the, there was an, the issue or, or an issue was about funding um, for um, a, a, a further um, pilot study, a different pilot study, I think, from the one that, that the earlier documents referred to. Um, I'm not going to go through the detail of, of the, the note, uh, but in terms of who would decide when something needed to be drawn to the attention of ministers and when it didn't, was that essentially a judgment that was made by Dr. Metters? Uh, as far as I recall, he always made known if we should be preparing a submission. Yes. Um, and, and then, um, if we actually, if we can go to um, the note um, uh, on a slightly different topic that then went to ministers a few days later, NHBT five zero six one underscore one three zero. In fact, th th this may be the final version of the note that was being referred to. Um, it, 1st of May, um, it's going to Dr. Metters and to, um, um, again, to the, to the Minister. Uh, and you say this, Minister may recall that the question whether to screen all blood donations for hepatitis C has been under discussion in the ACVSB. This notice to advise Minister of Development. In France, Belgium, Luxembourg and Finland, screening has recently been introduced for all donations. And in Italy, the screening is voluntary. However, at its meeting on 24th of April, our committee reaffirmed its view that the introduction of routine screening would not yet be justified. The new tests developed in the USA have not been approved by the FDA, and there are still unresolved difficulties concerning the tests. And then you refer to the committee's advice about a pilot study and, and the working party being um, set up uh, to draw up a protocol for the study and then the request for funds um, for the study. Now, um, two questions arising out of this, Mr. Canavan. The first is, this is you, the department, reporting to the minister, telling the minister that uh, other countries now have started to introduce screening for, for hepatitis C. Do, do, do you recall whether there was any, any pushback or challenge or probing from a, a minister or the chief medical officer or anyone else at this stage along the lines of, well, if other countries are doing it, why are we not yet doing it? No, I don't recall any such pushback. Um, and then the second question is more generally about the issue of, of, of other countries introducing screening. Um, you referred there to countries which had recently introduced screening. The inquiry knows that as the months went by, more and more countries started to introduce screening, including in due course in, in the USA, um, um, bef quite some time before the United Kingdom introduced screening. To what extent did, did that 
trouble or concern you or your colleagues in the department, that other countries were going ahead, but the UK still wasn't? Well, I think we were being guided by the ACVSB's advice, and they knew about developments elsewhere, uh, but were still sticking to their advice that now wasn't the appropriate time to go forward with screening. And, and do you recall whether consideration was ever given to you or your colleagues perhaps making contact with officials in some of these other countries to, to try and explore why they felt able to go ahead when the UK didn't yet? No. So that, 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 that wasn't something that was considered as, as far as you can recall? It wasn't something I recall being considered, no. Um, now, if we pick matters up then in June 1990 with a minute from Dr. Metters to, to you and others, DHSC 0003973 underscore 104. Um, so this is Dr. Metters, 5th of June 1990. We can see it's to a, 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 um, you, Dr. Raymond, Dr. Pickles, and, and others. Um, uh, and then uh, in the second paragraph, um, the last sentence, it refers to the FDA having now approved the HCV antibody test. And then Dr. Meta says, in the changed circumstances, I think it would be prudent to bring forward the next meeting of the ACVSB to the 2nd of July, as I feel the committee need to consider further whether UK blood donations should be routinely screened for hepatitis C antibody. Uh, and then the last sentence of that paragraph refers to the importance of the issue to be discussed. The next paragraph tells us it's, going to, it's to be a special meeting which, which will be devoted entirely to hepatitis C screening. Uh, and he refers to an annex of specific questions um, that uh, will, will need to be considered. And then the last paragraph, he says, I apologize for the short notice of this meeting, but events are now moving fast and strongly indicate that we should consider again at an early date our advice to ministers um, on uh, hepatitis C uh, testing. Um, now, it, it, it would appear from this that in particular the FDA's decision um, was leading Dr. Metters to view this as something that, that really now needed to be considered a, a, again urgently. Um, do, do you recall any greater sense of urgency developing either within the department internally or at, at ACVSB level? after the FDA decision? No, beyond what is written in Dr. Minute, uh, Dr. Metter's minute, um, that's, uh, as I recall it, I, I think members always attach some significance to whether or not the FDA had approved the test. But beyond that, I don't really recall at what point they uh, sort of uh, took a different attitude or whether they thought that was for them, you know, uh, to act on. Um, for, right. Um, I, I'm not going to go to the annex with specific questions which um, Dr. Metters refers to, but for the benefit of those listening, it's at WITN 711501. Um, can we then look at um, a, a minute that you sent back to Mr. Anderson uh, in the middle of June 1990, NHBT 5061 underscore 145. So you say um, in, in this minute, and we can see it's, it's copied to Dr. Raymond, it's from you to Mr. Anderson. Um, and you say this, I'm returning to the cost-benefit question, as it seems likely the ACVSB will, will recommend anti-HCV screening at its specially convened meeting on the 2nd of July. Um, you will see from the draft minutes of the last meeting that a pilot study was the preferred next step at that time. However, our experts now seem to think advances in knowledge about the anti-HCV test and the means of confirming results make it very difficult to resist the introduction of screening. A, a number of countries um, ha have already done so. 
Mr. Kalavan, a question I'm asked to explore with you is, is that use of the word resist and whether the reference to making it very difficult to resist the introduction of screening um, uh, has any particular significance in terms of um, um, conveying a degree of reluctance prior to this point in time on the part of the department or the ACVSB. Do you have any no, comment? I don't, think, I don't think it had that meaning. I think it was just a word, you know, um, and described their, um, the decisions they'd made in various meetings not to go forward. I suppose that would be another way with recommending screening. Um, now, if we just turn to the special meeting, 2nd of July, 1990. May, may, may I just ask us this? The, this uh, minute that you were sending to Mr. Anderson uh, was being sent by you in the knowledge that the committee of which you were the secretary, or part of the secretariat, um, was likely to recommend screening. That, therefore, would be the policy you would wish, on behalf of the committee, to advance. Am I right? In the sense of uh, getting them to produce the economic analysis so that, if that were the decision, we could go forward to ministers very quickly. Uh, and you're writing to someone who has expressed a scepticism about the financial benefits coming from testing. Uh, and you're, are, are you perhaps using the words difficult to resist uh, as anticipating that he might wish to resist the screening and you are trying to persuade him otherwise? Is that a way of looking at the reading uh, of, the, of the words you used? It would certainly be a reading of it, but I honestly can't recall beyond what I've said before that um, it was uh, just the words that might have been expressed in other ways. Yes, I see. So it might have been that, but you can't say. Thank you. No. Um, if we could then just move to the special meeting on the 2nd of July, PRSE 40976. If we go to page two, we've got the date there, um, and, uh, which tells us it's minutes of the seventh meeting held on the 2nd of July of 1990. Um, and then we've got the heading further down that page, hepatitis C antibody screening test. Um, uh, and we can see last, Two lines or so, last three lines, says the meeting had therefore been brought forward so that a decision on the introduction of UK hepatitis C testing could be reached. If we go over the page, um, the, the, there's a reference in paragraph six to um, uh, the, the, the chair saying testing has been carried out in America and other countries. Um, and then paragraph seven refers to a contribution from Professor Zuckerman and Dr. Gunson. And, and then this uh, paragraph eight records the committee's decision. After further discussion, the committee concluded that they should recommend to ministers that hepatitis C testing should be introduced in the UK, but that first, a pilot study using the ortho and Abbott tests was necessary to decide which was the better test for the regional transfusion centers. Now, Dr. Caliban, I'm not, I'm not going to ask you about the reasoning of the committee. Your, your role, as you've told us, was as administrative secretary. Um, you were not a member of the committee. Um, but it, it may be said, in relation to the, the committee's decision in, in, in July 1990, um, it, it could be said it's a bit of a cop-out, in a sense. It's recommending the introduction, in principle, but then saying, well, it's not actually going to be introduced until a further pilot study has um, been carried out to decide which is the best test. Um, um, now, w was that something which you or your colleagues thought at the time? Were you, do you recall any concern about the fact that the 
the bullet still hadn't been bitten as at the 2nd of July 1990, and, and a further study was now anticipated? No. Um, uh, the feasibility of testing in the regional transfusion centres always had to be a consideration. And, and can you recall whether internally within the department um, there, was ever, there was any thinking along the lines of, well, why not let the regional transfusion centres, centres um, try both tests simultaneously or make their own decisions as to which test to use? I don't recall any such consideration, um, but obviously if they had gone down their own road, there would have been operational implications for the RTCs. If one test turned out to be better or worse than the other, and of course they would have to invest in the equipment, and staff, and so on. And the issue about if one of the tests is seen to be weaker, what do you do with the donations that had been um, tested using that one? Would they have to be rerun, or how would they be treated? Um, if we just then move to August 1990, and a further note from you, NHBT 5061 underscore 169. Uh, so this is you, 7th of August 1990, um, to, uh, again, address to the private office of the Parliamentary Under Secretary of State in the Lords. Um, so it's you updating the Minister, and paragraph one explains that PSL will wish to know that at its July meeting, the ACVSB advised in principle that all blood donations should be screened for hepatitis C virus. There's then reference that there's going to be a full submission, uh, and, um, and then paragraph two explains that the ACVSB's recommendation of a of a pilot study. Um, again, do you recall whether there was any pushback or challenge or further probing from ministers at this stage saying, well, why aren't we just going ahead now? No, I don't remember any pushback of that sort from the minister, no. Um, and then if I can just invite your observations on a minute that you were copied into uh, in July of 1990, NHBT 5061 underscore 154. Um, this is from Mr Malone Lee in the NHSME, so NHS Management Executive, 9th of July 1990. It's addressed to Dr Metters but copied to you, Dr. Raymond, um, and Dr. Pickles. Uh, and then we can see um, Mr. Malone Lee's perspective set out in the main paragraph of the note. I expressed concern about the resource consequences of the immediate acceptance by ministers of the likely advice of the ACVSB that hepatitis C screening should be introduced for all blood donations. If memory serves me right, Dr. Gunts has calculated the cost in a full year would be about five million pounds. In preparing a submission to ministers, we must bring out the resource consequences, the fact that we're not making a bid in the public expenditure survey, and that before any announcement is made regarding the introduction of the test, we would need to discuss with the BTS um, how it would be funded. Um, now, it's right to note that D Dr. Metters responded to that. I'm not going to put his response on screen, but it's at WITN 7115016. Um, setting out Dr. Meta's perspective, but um, in, in terms of the role of the NHS management executive, it might be said that, ex that, that uh, this contribution uh, indicates a preoccupation with how this would be funded rather than with the public health benefits. Um, do you have any reflection on that, or did you have any ongoing dealings with the NHS management executive on this issue? No, but I mean, they were primarily concerned with running the NHS and therefore finance would be a critical issue for them. Um, 
if we move forward in time to November 1990, and I'm, I'm going to skate over further work that was being undertaken on the cost-benefit analysis, further interactions you were having with, um, um, I think, Mr. A An Anderson and others, and we go to the ACVSB meeting in November 1990. Um, we can pick that up at NHBT 5073 underscore 018. Um, and um, we can see the date of the meeting is the 21st of November 1990. Um, and if we go to page 3... Again, I'm not going to read out all the detail of it. It's just to see in, in terms of chronology. At paragraph 10, we have the committee saying this. The committee agreed that it was important to start screening as soon as practicable as a measure which would further enhance the safety um, of the blood supply. Um, so that, that's the position in terms of the ACVSB recommendation in, in November 1990. I want to then pick up... What, what you were then involved with um, uh, in terms of the production of documents in light of that decision. So um, if we could go to SCGV 40s 210 underscore 117. Um, this is um, a, a minute attaching a note from uh, um, uh, Dr. McIntyre in the Scottish Home and Health Department uh, and addressed to uh, officials within the Scottish Home and Health Department. It's dated the 26th of November 1990 and it's his note of the ACVSB meeting that had been held on the 21st of November. I I'm not going to ask you to look at the detail of, of Mr. McIntyre's description, but if we could go to page three, please. Towards the bottom of the page, the penultimate paragraph says it was agreed that a submission should be made to ministers along these lines. The chairman and his administrative colleague, Mr. Canavan, agreed to send a copy of the draft submission to Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland within the next few days. Um, now, j just pausing there, um, was that the normal practice um, that uh, if ministers were being updated about ACVSB meeting, um, what was going to be sent to ministers was shared in advance with Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland? Or was this a yes. new thing because this was going to be the submission recommending introduction? No, it was a, a routine um, action to keep them abreast of developments in matters in which they had a say, such as the ACVSB, which operated on a UK-wide basis. Um, so would this be um, an opportunity for colleagues in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland to comment on the text of the draft submission and suggest changes if they th thought that was appropriate? They would have had that opportunity, yes. Um, and presumably they uh, would also have been putting a submission to their own ministers along the same lines. Um, now, um, you then were tasked with the first draft of the submission to ministers. And we can see that from DHSC 30 2534 underscore 055. Um, this is um, you to um, Mr. Dobson, to whom you reported, and, and, and others, 30th of November 1990. Uh, and you say in the first paragraph, following the recommendations of the ACVSB last week, I attach for comment the first draft of a submission recommending the introduction of anti-HCV screening. Um, the third paragraph uh, says um, this. I understand that PHLS bid... Um, sorry, the second paragraph. The bid for new HCHS money to cover the cost of HCV screening was struck out earlier this year. So I've assumed that the RTC costs will have to be found from the HA's own resources. Um, had you had any involvement with the bid for new HCHS money on this issue? Not that I recall, no. So it, would it be f fair to say you, you don't know why it was struck out or rejected? No, I, I don't know. Um, now, um, in the last 
paragraph of this minute, you ask for comments by the 4th of December, and you say, as we need to move this up the line and let the other health departments see it without too much delay following the ACBSB meeting. Now, um, after you'd circulated your draft submission, you got quite a lot of comments on it from Mr. Anderson, from Dr. Metters and others, and, and you were asked to do redrafts. I'm not going, going to take you through the detail of, of the drafting um, process, um, but I, I do want to ask you to look at just one of um, Dr. Metters' um, comments. It's at NHBT 5061 underscore 201. Um, so this is Dr. Metters on the 18th of December 1990, um, so um, a, a rather later or a bit later than the deadline you'd asked. Um, to uh, at you, paragraph one refers to the draft submission, which I think had gone through various iterations since your original draft. Uh, and then paragraph two, Dr. Metters says this, my major concern is that the submission does not properly reflect the views of ACBSB. The committee in July reached the conclusion that HEV screening could prevent a significant proportion of post-transfusion hepatitis. Uh, and then there's reference to Professor Zuckerman's contribution. Paragraph three, furthermore, the committee's view is that with the existence of the current test procedures, to continue a policy of not screening poses an unacceptable risk to the health of recipients of blood and plasma. The committee recognized that detailed cost benefits of HCV screening could not be quantified, Nevertheless, their unanimous conclusion is that the UK should follow the lead of an increasingly long list of countries, your paragraph five refers, who have now introduced HCV screening in order to significantly reduce the load of non-A, non-B post-transfusion hepatitis. The submission must convey more clearly ACVSB's position and the committee's assessment uh, of uh, the benefit-risk balance. Um, now, it, it, it would seem by this time, December 1989, Dr. Mehta's view uh, um, and the committee's view was that um, uh, continuation of the status quo was an unacceptable risk to the health of recipients of, of blood and uh, plasma. D do you have any reflection now, uh, having looked back at a range of documents for the purposes of producing your statement, uh, uh, whether that's a judgment that um, um, could and should have been reached at a rather earlier stage of the decision-making process? I mean, the difficulty for me is that as an administrator with no medical scientific background, it would be very difficult for me to uh, say whether the tests themselves had advanced to a stage where they could have been useful at an earlier stage. Um, so it, uh, you know, I was relying entirely on the advice of ACBSB as to when they considered the advice, uh, the science and had moved along sufficiently for them to make a recommendation. Now, the final submission went on the 21st of December 1990 to the Minister, PRSE 0004667. Um, I'm not going to, again, go through the detail of it. We, we've looked at it in earlier hearings, but we can see the date, 21st of December. Um, it's addressed to the CMO um, and to the Parliamentary Under Secretary of State in the Lords. Um, and then if we just go um, to the third page, we can see under the heading case for screening, you've set out the main arguments in favour of screening, the first of which is that it's a public health measure which would reduce the incidence of post-transfusion hepatitis and the spread of HCV in the community at large. You then set out some other arguments. You set out the case against, um, towards the bottom of the page, um, and then if we just go to page four, the conclusions, paragraph 16 and 17, set out the ACVSB's recommendation um, 
and, and observed that further delay in the introduction of HEV screening would be difficult to defend. And then paragraph 17 sets out the recommendation of routine screening. And the minister was asked to take a decision. Now, the minister's decision was 16th of January 1991. That's already been explored with um, um, the minister in, in her evidence. Um, do you have any observation, however, on, in terms of the time frame on whether it took too long to get from the meeting on the 21st of November 1990 to a ministerial decision on the 16th of January 1991? I can really say, and maybe that would have covered the Christmas period when ministers may not have been around. Um, now, we can take that down, thank you. We, we know that screening was not introduced across the UK. Um, it was introduced in Newcastle in, in, earlier in 1991, but it was not introduced until September 1991. Um, and I just want to ask you to look at one document before I um, um, pose a question to you about that. It's PRSE 0002280. This is now the ACVSB on the 25th of February 1991. So um, it, it's a, a, a few weeks after the minister has given the, the go ahead. Um, if we just go to page three, paragraph six, um, we can see in the last sentence of paragraph six, um, this is recorded, members agreed it was important for proper evaluation of the ortho and Abbott one and two tests, and that's a reference to first and second generation tests, to be carried out before RTCs decided which test they would adopt. And then the chair sums up the view of the committee. Um, if we just go to the bottom of the page, there's a reference there to any new test being evaluated against um, 10,000 um, specimens. Uh, held. Um, now, again, Mr. Canavan, I'm not going to ask you to comment on the, the actual decision making of the ACVSB in, 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 in light of the answers you've already given us. But d do you recall whether there was any concern within the department um, uh, at, um, at, at this decision or recommendation from the committee, bearing in mind Dr. Metters had described an unacceptable risk? in his minute in December, uh, you'd flagged up in your submission to ministers the, the public health imperative for the introduction of the screening. And then here we had the ACVSB saying, well, now there needs to be a, an evaluation of the first and second generation tests, which might then lead to a further delay in the introduction of screening. Do you recall what the response was within, within your team to that? Uh, no, and in fact, I don't think I was at that meeting. No, that's right. I think I, I was probably on leave. Um, but I don't recall any um, aftermath as a result of uh, the, the minutes being circulated. Um, in, in terms then of the period of time that elapsed until September 1991 when the screening was introduced on, on, on a UK-wide basis, did you have any involvement in deciding whether um, uh, um, that delay or the reasons for the delay um, um, should be reported to uh, ministers at any stage? No, it was handed over to the NBTS to implement the decision. And um, they were the people who were going through the hoops to do the necessary preparatory work. I don't recall that the, um, within the department the uh, thought of doing anything other than that. Um, then uh, you, you know from, from the documents that you've looked at for the purposes of your statement, Mr. Canavan, that the Newcastle uh, Regional Transfusion Centre 
decided to introduce testing earlier because it was ready to, to do so. And, and, and the inquiry has heard from Dr. Lloyd, the regional transfusion director there, about, about his reasoning. The documentation suggests a degree of concern within the department about that. Uh, and, and it's an issue we've explored with other witnesses. Do you um, have any recollection of what your response was? W were you as concerned about Dr. Lloyd's actions as some, as, as some colleagues may have been? I don't actually recall, but the breaking rights when one of the reasons for setting up ACVSB was to try and get everybody to act uh, in unison, it did seem uh, a bit of a backward step. Um, and then if I can ask you to look, um, I think just at two further documents on, on this issue. Um, the first is NHBT 40192 underscore 076. Um, this is a minute from you to Mr. Malone Lee, 3rd of June 1991. Um, uh, and uh, if we just pick it up in paragraph four, you say this. As for HCV testing, I don't think anyone was under any illusions, but that it was marginal in terms of cost benefit. But this is true of other NHS interventions. However, the litigation factor, the introduction of testing elsewhere in Europe, and the prospect of EC harmonisation of licensing requirements for blood products stacked up in favour of testing. Um, and one of the questions I'm asked to ask you, um, um, Mr Caliban, is to explain why you um, um, thought it was marginal in terms of cost benefit. I think that was feeding off the uh, Robert Anderson's economic analysis. Um, and I think he had come up with a figure of uh, 6,000 per quality, which he himself referred to as being not particularly good. So you're talking there about essentially the economic cost benefit rather yes. than the public yes. health benefit? Yes, yes. Um, and then um, the last document uh, on this issue which is NHBT 40192 underscore 125. Um, this is 30th of July 1991. It's, an, it's from you to um, the, the Parliamentary Under Secretary of State and the Lords again. Uh, and uh, it's about the question of issuing a press release announcing the introduction of routine screening of blood donations for the presence of hepatitis C. Um, and we can see your recommendation is that a press release be issued. Uh, the, there are matters of background set out. I'm not going to read through that. Under the heading publicity, there's a reference to um, the HIV litigation um, having recently settled uh, and there being current sensitivity surrounding blood transfusion recipients and the introduction of HIV testing may prompt further questions about blood safety. There may also be questions about why testing was not introduced earlier, as it was in some other countries, whether the department is making extra money available. Um, and then over the page, you say, paragraph seven, we believe that the balance of advantage lies in making a low-key announcement about the introduction of HCV testing. Um, why was it um, your view, uh, or your team's view, that the balance of advantage lay in making a low-key announcement. Was, was that to try and avoid those very questions, critical questions being asked? No, it wasn't. I mean, they were going to be asked anyway because the press would have caught on to the fact that testing was being introduced. I think that just reflected that the substance of the release wouldn't have widespread interest for the general public. We, we can take that down, thank you. Um, and just a couple of general questions reflecting on the decision making in relation to um, ACVSB um, testing. Um, 
it, it may be said that the, the public health imperative, the importance of avoiding that um, unacceptable risk, to, to use Dr. Mehta's phrase, mm. got lost in the search for the right test or got lost in the, the um, work being undertaken to try and find an economic justification. Um, do you have any observation on, on that suggestion, <coughs> if it were to be said? Not really. I mean, at the time when it was all going on, each step seemed to be a logical next move. Um, and I think that uh, the final submission to ministers reflected the fact that it was a public health measure. And that it was a public health measure. But the steps taken to get there uh, seemed logical at the time. Um, and looking back at it now, do you have any reflections on whether it took too long to get to the stage that was reached in September 1991? whether the urgency was, was lost in that, that, that detailed consideration? I don't think that the issue got lost, but, you know, whether or not it could have been done quicker, I mean, I would find it very difficult to, to um, say, given the issues in play, uh, given that there are scientific and medical issues in play. So that, that's the end of the questions on this topic, and um, I hope in near perfect timing for lunch. Uh, yes, well, it is. Um, so we'll take a break until two o'clock. Two o'clock. <laughs>